I think just this conversation we're having tonight is really helpful. I mean, like I said, I was in your shoes at one point, but it's, that's 30 years ago. And now I'm kind of more of the, you know, I wish they'd do it my way, but I have to remember, yeah, no, it was ones like this for me too. Being a senior, I've gone through four years um, at the school. I've been through a lot of different classes. I actually had you, Dr. Balaban, for econ. One of the toughest things that I've noticed is the, kind of the relationship between, say, the student athletes and the professors. I've had some very different experiences, wide ranged from great experiences. They actually liked that I was involved in athletics, really respected it. And I've had others that have been really tough on me and you know didn't appreciate the fact that I had to travel or kind of what I was trying to do. In my opinion, it feels as though professors think that we have a choice as to whether we travel or not, or that um, you know we like missing school. And I'm not sure if you know that's the way that you think with your students. I'd be interested to hear what you have to say about that. I have to admit, having been in your shoes, I am super sympathetic. And every time, like a student shows me their travel letter, and it's this long about dates they're going to be out, I'm like, wow. And I almost get that pit in my gut because I remember being like yourself, a serious student, and knowing like I had this commitment. You know, this is why I'm at school here at this school, and they're helping to pay for it. Um, and also feeling like, wow, I don't have that choice, right? So as from a professor's point of view, I know how tough it is for you. But at the same time, right? Uh, I know it's hard for me because I do teach large classes, to be able to juggle all the needs of the different students that I have between the athletes and others. Yeah, I just want to chime in and say, you know, the, the athletics committee, you know, we kind of sit in the Bermuda Triangle of faculty, mm -hmm. student athletes, uh, and coaches. And, you know, one of our big initiatives, because we heard the, alarm, the alarms were was student athlete mental health. Um, and so doing a deep dive into student athlete mental health and making sure you all had the proper resources, when you go back to the root of the problem, right, well, you know, there are stressors obviously with being a student athlete um, and with competing in academics, but going to the root of some of those stressors was just like you said, this sort of uh, boots on the ground interaction relationship with your professors at the lowest level where, you know, it's not anything that's focused on when you start oh what about tv contracts and more games and all these things these are like the real life real world things that you guys are kind of going through at the um, you know at the granular level yeah I, I like the term boots on the ground like our coach always tells us on the first day of class like take your hat off sit in the front row and introduce yourself to the professor just because there are so many negative stigmas about student athletes in class whether it's not caring about your schoolwork or you know, obviously the, the travel is a big component of it, but you don't want to do anything to, to enforce those stereotypes as a student athlete. You know, go to office hours, show the professor that you care. I know um, in a lot of my classes I've made, you know, conscious effort to go up and speak with the professor, try to let them know that I'm not just the typical student athlete that just wants to get out of this class and not even put the work in, not show up when you don't have to. But it's just, it's very interesting. Um, I had a conversation in one of my classes about it, and one of the girls next to me on, I think, the lacrosse team said the same thing. She was like, I work really hard and I care about my grades. And she's like, I feel like every time I come into class or a new class, meet a new professor, I have to try to express to them that I am that kind of student. I do care. But yeah, it's really tough. I mean, kind of breaking that stigma of the difference between the athletes that do and don't care and the people that are athlete student or student athlete it's really it's really a difficult thing we talk about uh, talk about it at our at our committee and you know Rita can probably expound on it a little bit better but if you teach 500 students you might have 50 absences for all different reasons and of course the student athletes get you know sort of lumped into that group of folks but then how that weighs on your life yeah oh it's crazy <laughs> i mean just today i gave a final exam i had students sitting at 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and next Friday. And then I've got one who probably won't be able to take it until next semester because of just you know, personal reasons and stuff. That's amazing. It's amazing. You just want it to be over, right, yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. And um, so it's really hard to juggle it all. And, you know, like Daryl said, 
we have lives. <laughs> it's, I don't know how you do it with your family. I don't even have kids. I, I can't take her myself. You know, I, I don't know how, uh, you know, most people with families can do it. You know, it's, it's, uh, I think you've got to understand a little bit where your professors are coming from when you do approach them. Um, I know in our previous conversation I mentioned this when you know I have a baseball player someone comes up to me and says here's my travel letter I'm gonna miss a week of your class and I go oh! and my reaction is not necessarily like meant to be to attack the student because I know this is your obligation but it's like what the heck are they doing taking you out of school for a week right that's that's what hits me is there like something that you appreciate when either someone comes to you or like kind of starting off that relationship, is there something that you look for that, in your opinion, helps you um, to either get a relationship with them or feel better about like the communication or whatnot? I'm just curious from like the teacher's perspective, because like I said, I always try my best to either get to know them or try to be nice or show them that I care. One thing that I, at least I think puts us on a good ground is when you do come with a letter, you know, you let me know up front. Oh. I'm going to miss two exams, or I'm not going to miss any, and, um, you know, I've got friends in the class. Like, you're willing and able to kind of, like, take some of that responsibility on, on yourself. That makes it a little yeah. easier for us. Otherwise, like I said, it's, it's not your fault, but for whatever reason, I feel like I pick up this extra burden. And a lot of times, I think, building those relationships, right, we're all human beings, and it's about relationships, and everybody's going to be different, everybody's going to play different sports, different time commitments, but it's just having, like, I think, those frank discussions, because that's part of you all's development, as well as, you know, young adults that are going to be going into the world with your education. We always discuss, you know, how can we help, you know, alleviate that stress of you giving this letter face-to-face -to, -face to your professor. You know, is it role-playing? Is it giving you, giving you all, you know, actual words to say, hey, think about saying this and using this to ease that stress. And there's definitely, I agree, there's some responsibility placed on the student athlete. If you know you're, you know, we know we're gonna miss class before we even come to be a student athlete here. So, you know, let your professor know, but then make extra efforts to compensate for that missed time, whether that's meeting with the professor after class or going to office hours, just so they know that you do really care. And it's interesting, because you probably all have had exposure, some kind of training about how you approach the press. Right. right, when it's right. time to speak it's to the them. So thing. similarly, why not a little session on right. how to approach your professors? I just remember as a student athlete going to a professor and knowing I was gonna miss, let's say, five days of class. And getting like sick to my stomach knowing that, yeah, I'm missing five days of class, but I'm also traveling, and when am I supposed to like prepare for the next class or do my homework? And so I, I know the anxiety you feel, the, the pressure, because you are here to be students. I just remember being like, wow, I wish I didn't have to go on the road for four days. I wish I could just stay home and write this paper. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Whoever says that is a regular student, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even that, I wish I could stay up past 10.30 to do this work because I have to get up at 5.30 in the so morning. True. You know, So mm -hmm. there's definitely a, a timing aspect of it too um, that all student athletes are obviously conscious of. But I guess a lot of times, I, I don't know if you've experienced this, but I feel like press, professors probably don't understand that if that's not something that they've lived before. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, yeah, one of the hardest parts is, yes, we miss class, so then we're traveling, so then we're expected to not only catch up on our work, but continue forward. A lot of times it feels like a perpetual cycle of trying to catch up. Yeah, you're never done, ever. And even when you think you're there, you're just going to get behind again. Yeah, it's very frustrating, and I think it costs me some grades, which really stinks, because I'm trying to, you know, do my best. I, I usually try to avoid wearing a ton of UNC athletic stuff to class. Just, we talked about it earlier, just because of the stigmas that are associated with it, especially if it's a class where you're writing papers or your work is graded subjectively, you don't want the professor's impression of you because you're an athlete to possibly impact something. I mean, there's stories of guys in the athletic department that have been accused of cheating because they're on the same sports team and and that's the evidence that they had so it's, it's things like that you know as a student athlete it makes you conscious of what you're wearing to class definitely yeah ironically I wear my gear proud um, that is a little different I'm majoring in sports administration so um, which is really nice I felt my professors have actually appreciated the athlete perspective uh, which has felt really inclusive and honestly really nice sometimes I feel like I have an advantage over regular students uh, in my classes. Um, like I said, I just try to 
make the best relationships no matter what and hope that they like me for me and not just because of the clothes that I'm wearing. Do you find though even sometimes, like we were talking about the professor student, but do you find even your classmates? 100%. There's a stigma there? Yeah, Especially I, I, in group projects. Again, again I, I feel like I don't have that stigma. I'm like smart jock. I, don't, I never say the dumb jock, I'm like smart. Yeah. Um, no, I, but I feel, I feel like I sense that with students. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've never experienced that explicitly, but it's definitely something that you can sense is there a lot of the time. Yeah. No, I've definitely heard um, students kind of say, oh yeah, I've got an athlete in my group, or like, oh boy, like these athletes. Or, I mean, I've even heard people taking classes saying, oh, there's a bunch of athletes in my class, like, I should take that class, or something along those lines. So, like, there's definitely, with students, there is a, like, very noticeable, like, oh, athletes are there, or athletes aren't there. Like, would, would you all say it's a, more of a uh, implicit feel of this stigma, or are there discrete, or have you heard of discrete examples? I don't think that there's any outward talk mm -hmm. of like, you know, really going against student athletes or like can't stand them, but there definitely is like suggestions. I know, you know, throughout my years with my team, we either suggest classes or we don't based on how kind of the relationships go or how adaptable they are. Mm -hmm. But we also strategize per semester as well, knowing when we'll miss classes, when we won't or when it's a good time to dig your heels in a class or not. So yeah, like my fall is my time to dig my heels in and my spring is my time that I'm hoping that I've got a little easier of a route, um, you know, with the schedule and the travel. So what kind of reforms would y'all like to see that might make this relationship between the academic and athletic side smoother? I think at the ground level there just needs to be more communication between student athletes and professors so that there is a mutual understanding. I know a lot of the times, you know, we don't think about the fact that you have multiple 300 person lectures when we're missing a class or we're, uh, we're missing an exam and we're just like, oh, she doesn't want to deal with me. But you know, you, you have a life and you have other students who are missing I don't have reasons. a life. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, like, it, I think there needs to be more interaction between the student athletes and the professors and, and a mutual understanding is the way that to, to kind of bridge the gap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think for me in a perfect world, there would be either like a staff or maybe more academic advisors or something that would b kind of bridge that communication or bridge the problems. If there was someone, some staff, some advisor that could help us with either scheduling a better time or even making up a new exam or if it's an adult that knows exactly what they're talking about, knows exactly the scenario and can really like reach out and like either fix the problem or like I said bridge the gap. Just starting there, just opening up the transparency for the faculty to see what you all go through, right? And then that same way um, giving you all ways to um, you know, interact with faculty to make those relationships fruitful.